So now what we're going to be focusing on is the idea of growth. And growth is a critical process of any animal's life, of any organism's life. Both you and I have to grow or did grow. And this was all regulated somehow. There was something that was telling our bodies to grow. And that sort of message was being sent by a major hormone called growth hormone. And that's a part of the endocrine system worth sort of highlighting. So in the next two flowcharts, we're going to be looking at the topic of hormonal growth regulation. Basically, the big question here is, how do we grow? What tells us to grow? How is this even possible? And it's fascinating to me, and hopefully you see the same after you see just how complicated and how beautiful this mechanism really is, in my opinion at least. So, let's get to it. What we have here is a big focus on GH, which is growth hormone. So let's remember, growth hormone is going to be both produced and also secreted at a specific location of the endocrine system that produced and secreted is going to be both at the or by let's say the anterior pituitary so that's basically where we're at right now now the growth hormone that we're focusing on remember it's also going to be it's going to be of course in charge of growth thus the name but remember its function is actually going to be both tropic and also non-tropic in terms of how it works as a hormone. Either it's going to go to an endocrine gland and stimulate another endocrine gland, or it's going to directly affect some sort of target tissue immediately, if it's non-tropic, and then um, previously if it goes to another endocrine gland and does something else for another hormone, then it would be tropic. So that's the idea of the combination of both that growth hormone establishes. Now, gro growth hormone, for the most part, has the liver as its number one target. So this is kind of weird to think that all of growth is basically targeted at the liver. Why is that? Well, the liver will receive growth hormone and it will uh, constitute or give a some sort of response. And that response is going to be a major response to release something called insulin-like growth factors, IGFs. These are very, 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 very important proteins that are going to be released in response to a growth hormone message sent to the liver from the anterior pituitary, right? So when we have these IGFs released, what, what's the big deal? What do IGFs do? IGFs are going to stimulate, if they are released by the liver, they stimulate bone and cartilage growth. So the number one thing that's really happening in terms of growth, let's say during a big time of growth, which would be puberty, let's say, is a great amount of bone elongation and bone density growth and cartilage growth as well. So it makes sense that during that time, you are going to have a significant amount of growth hormone being also released from the anterior pituitary and being produced from there as well, I should say. So this is going to stimulate bone and cartilage growth. That is the IGFs and the IGFs come from the liver. The liver does this only when growth hormone tells it to. Okay. So that's basically our mechanism of action here, and this is our mechanism of regulation, therefore, as well. But what we need to remember is that there's going to be a constant sort of flux that we need to uh, sort of figure out in terms of growth hormone. In essence, what I'm trying to say is that because this is such an influential hormone that is both tropic and non-tropic and has far-reaching capabilities, we absolutely need to regulate it. We need to regulate the amount of GH within the body. And if this is not regulated, then we're going to have systemic problems. So we need to regulate amount of GH. So let's remember the following. The hypothalamus is king, in my opinion at least. The hypothalamus is in charge of releasing, inhibiting and releasing hormones, aka promoting something or not promoting something, or let's say telling things to stop doing what they're doing. So the hypothalamus in this situation releases two releasing hormones, uh, two hormones that are either going to release or inhibit. And they are sp easily named growth hormone, releasing hormone. So remember RH was something that the hypothalamus produces and releases. Now we're just adding the growth hormone specificity here. And also the hypothalamus releases and produces, therefore, the GH growth hormone inhibiting hormone. Now you can already imagine one of these is going to say, hey, no more growth. One of these is going to say, hey, we need some growth. Okay, hopefully you can connect the dots there. So let's see. 
So let's imagine a regulatory situation in which we have growth hormone levels too high. So let's write this down as if GH levels, that is growth hormone levels, are too high, we're going to have a endocrine response, a hypothalamic response as well initially, I would say. And that would be the following. The hypothalamus will say, hey, I sense that growth hormone is way too high, so I'm going to try to make it lower. How am I going to make it lower? I'm going to, as the boss, secrete growth hormone, inhibiting hormone. Key word, inhibiting. Key letter, I, in that abbreviation. So upon secreting that, we're going to, of course, have a target. The target would be the anterior pituitary, because the anterior pituitary is directly connected to the hypothalamus via that portal vein. So the anterior pituitary gets the message. The message is, growth hormone stop growth hormone inhibiting hormone so guess what the anterior pituitary does because the anterior pituitary produces and secretes growth hormone and gets this message of stopping the anterior pituitary then stops it secretes less growth hormone because the levels were too high initially this is a classic negative feedback loop as we see here and then, of course, we can round this discussion out by stating that, let's say we have the opposite. If GH levels are too low, what is the situation? What is the hypothalamic response and the anterior pituitary response? It's just the opposite. Nothing difficult here. We're just going to have the hypothalamus again notice that things are too low, so the hypothalamus secretes the opposite. It secretes growth hormone, releasing hormone basically saying make more growth hormone. But who is the hypothalamus talking to? AKA, who is the target of the hypothalamus growth hormone releasing hormone message? That target is the anterior pituitary. And then the anterior pituitary being the good employee that he or she is, the anterior pituitary does its job of producing and then secreting ultimately more growth hormone. Again, why are we secreting more growth hormone? Well, the initial levels were too low. Why did we secrete less growth hormone here? Well, the initial levels were too high. Classic negative feedback in a nutshell here. And that covers our first look at hormonal growth regulation. Now that we know what the norm is and the normal regulatory process, we're now going to be looking at what happens when things are out of whack, when things are not normal, and seeing the sort of consequences of this.